Question 3 from the 2019 Advanced Higher Physics Examination from the SQA. A gymnast in a straight position rotates around a high bar, and this is shown in figure 3a. The mass of the gymnast is 63 kilograms, and with arms extended, the total length of the gymnast is 2.1 metres. The gymnast is rotating with an angular velocity of 7.9 radians per second. Now for two marks. With arms extended, the gymnast can be approximated as a uniform rod. Using this approximation, show that the moment of inertia of the gymnast around the bar is 93 kilogram meters squared. So we've got to assume that the gymnast is a straight rod, a uniform rod, and it's rotating around the bar as shown. So where do we get our information from for this? We go to our data book, which has got all the moments of inertia inside like that. And the one we're looking for is rod about the end. This rod, this gymnast, we treat it, uh, the gymnast as a rod, is rotating around the top bar. So the one we're looking for, the moment of inertia, is that one there. It is the rod about the end, and the moment of inertia I is equal to one third the mass times the length squared. So all we have to do is put that down into our notebook then. The moment of inertia I is equal to one third times the mass, times the length squared of the rod. Put our numbers in then, one third times the mass, and the mass is going to be 63 kilograms, multiplied by the length, which we know is 2.1, and we have to square that. And we do that in a calculator, we end up with 93. And what's going to be the units of inertia? Well, we know 63 is going to be kilograms, and we know that 2.1 is a length meter squared, and there is the correct units for moment of inertia, 93 kilogram meter squared. Question 3b. The gymnast now makes a pike position by bending at the waist, and this is shown in figure 3b. This change of position causes the moment of inertia of the gymnast to decrease to 62 kilogram meter squared. And for one mark, we are asked to explain why making the pike position results in a decrease in the moment of inertia of the gymnast. Well, what exactly has happened to the gymnast? Well, there's the axis of rotation there. And the gymnast has gone from a long rod shape to a kind of like bundled up shape like that. And you can see that all the mass now is distributed very close now to the axis of rotation. Now we know that the moment of inertia I, if we go back to our first principles, is the sum of all the masses at, at multiplied by the square of the distance they are from the axis of rotation. So if all the mass is now concentrated near the axis of rotation, this means that Ri is going to become smaller and that will result in the moment of inertia becoming smaller. So the simple answer for one mark is this, that the moment of inertia decreases because all the mass distribution is nearer the axis of rotation, and this makes the moment of inertia smaller. 3b part 2. By considering the conservation of angular momentum, determine the angular velocity of the gymnast in the pike position. Well, we know from our data sheet that the angular momentum L is equal to the moment of inertia I times the angular velocity omega. And just like the linear momentum, we know that angular momentum is conserved, provided no external torque acts on the object. And this means that the angular momentum before uh, an activity and event will be equal to the angular momentum after the event. So we can put down our equation like this in angular momentum before must equal angular momentum afterwards. We will call that L1 and L2. So all we have to do is put in the moment of inertia before times the angular velocity before must equal the moment of inertia afterwards times the angular velocity afterwards, which you represent by I2 and, and omega2. Now we know from our data, we know that the initial I1, that's the initial moment of inertia for the gymnast, was at 93 kilogram meter squared. We know that his angular velocity 
was 7.9 radians per second. And we know that the moment inertia of the gymnast changed from 93 kilogram meter squared down to 62 kilogram meter squared. Remember, all the mass was brought nearer the, ang the rotation axis. So our job then is to find the angular velocity afterwards, which is what we're looking for. So rearrange the equation first to find omega 2. We just have to divide each side by the moment of inertia, I2. So omega 1 divided by I2. And that's going to give us the new angular velocity. So let's put in the numbers then. Numbers quite simple. I1 is going to be 93 multiplied by 7.9. Put a bracket around that. Divided by I2, which is 62. And our answer comes out to be 11.85 radians per second. This is we're dealing with two significant figures, so it's best to put that answer into two significant figures. So we'll say it's 12 radians per second. That's your answer. Thank mm -hmm. you.